and greetings to you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Bless the Lord for this beautiful, wonderful day that He has made for us. And you're going to be glad in it because He's made it so, He's made it possible. So thank God for today. Thank God for today. I want to pray for you wherever you are in the name of Jesus Christ that the word will come with strength and power and will heal your heart, will heal your body, will heal your soul, will heal your entire being. You'll be transformed and you will never be the same as you hear the power of the gospel. As the power of the gospel is revealed, released to you through your hearing, through your through revelation by the Spirit of God, you will experience change and salvation to the highest degree possible. I pray that today will be one of the best days in your lives, in your life, in your experiences. Today, the whole day will be such a beautiful day. And I pray in the name of Jesus that Spirit of God will open your eyes. The Spirit of God will help you see, will help you understand that which is hidden, revealed to you in Jesus' mighty name. I pray. I pray in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for this opportunity. This is another day that the Lord has made and we're going to be glad in it. It is always beautiful to to um, appreciate um, the love of God. If we are to grow in the knowledge of God, it has to be through his love. So he set us free from the corruption of sin through his death. And uh, even prior to his death, you know, he had done something very incredible, incredible that no one would have thought possible that is incarnation and the incarnation itself will tell you that well man is going to be saved forever because God is mixing up himself with man and like I said imagine who is powerful than who so that uh, uh, whoever that is stronger or greater than the lesser will be included or will be taken over or will be swallowed by the greater so what happened here is that when Jesus assumed our body, our nature, our flesh, he wanted to save us by his own nature. So his nature was supposed to save. So that is why we say humanity was saved by divinity. If you now see it clearly, this is what really happened. He used his divinity to heal humanity because humanity was sick and was corrupt. There's nothing that has ever saved man to his uttermost than this incarnation. When God assumed, through Jesus Christ, assumed our flesh, our humanity, he wanted to heal our humanity. And humanity was only to be healed by being elevated in divinity. This change, this shift, when God changed from the divine nature to assume human nature, was actually to lift up human nature into the divine nature this is how deep it is this is how profound it goes it is not just a mere forgiveness of sin you know uh, god to to uh, to tolerate uh, having mercy upon you it's yes there's more to that look at this he's saying he assumed your flesh he assumed your humanity this is this was first and foremost impossible but since it happened it was to produce or yield fruits that were unique there were unique fruits which were supposed to be produced by this very act of uniting himself with you you see this you see this brothers and sisters this is the greatest way you can you can and his salvation is is this is why this salvation is unique no one could do this you know the the priest in the old testament had 
people had no divine nature to assume other sinners. You, do you know that they had to sacrifice for, for themselves? They had to, uh, to atone for, them, for, for their own sins. Did you know that? They had to atone their own sins for their own sins. They had to because it was too much. They could not help but atone for their own sin. So, because they were not holy enough or righteous enough, before they help others, they had to try and, you know, atone for themselves. But what I'm saying is this. When this Jesus came, glory, 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 glory. He didn't need to go through. He didn't need to do all that. You see, whatever Jesus did, of course, and it seemed to be, uh, has connection with the Old Testament system was actually to put an end to the sacrificial system which was present. To put an end to that sacrificial system. The sacrificial system was put, was destroyed, was removed, was annihilated by the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ because the rest was not necessary, wasn't even needed. Because of the magnitude of what this man could do. One man could assume all humanity and bring it to its uh, position of, of, of salvation. This was in the dreams of God and, they had taken, and, and, and it was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Do you now see the power of Jesus Christ on saving humanity? It is because he assumed our humanity. And whatever is unassumed is unhealed. Like uh, Gregory of Nazianna, Gregory of Naziazus told us whatever that is unassumed is unhealed. That means if he was to heal all humanity, he had to assume all humanity to heal him, to heal all of us. And he has, he has manifested that love in assuming our humanity. So he became all that we were, so that we may be saved. This is how much he did it. He did it with style, like I said. He did it with style. It's not an ordinary way of saving men. There's a great man of God called Dr. Sean Smith. He made some few comments about this uh, particular verse. And I like these comments because they are so profound. They reveal so much in regard of... Uh, of this uh, incarnation, this event. This event is so powerful that probably people have skipped it. When they hear the birth of Jesus Christ, they think it's another, <laughs> another birth. Well, this is a unique birth and it, it, it strikes our, our, our minds. It, it opens up. I mean, that was the day that God manifested his love that was strange to humanity this kind of love was strange i mean god could st stand there and say well you be people be saved but he did much more he did much more Thank God, he did much more. He did much more. And, and I'm moved by that. I'm moved by this. So he said, the Apostle Paul presents this incarnation itself as redemptive. Yeah, if you see the way it is being presented to us, it's as if itself is redemptive. Before we even talk about the cross. Because the cross is so powerful, it has its place. And of course we are seeing what the cross produced. But even before he, he reached the cross, he had assumed, you know, our humanity. So he, he, he is so amused by this when Paul saw it. And he presents it as, as redemptive itself. The union of the divine and human natures in Jesus' reconciliation. <laughs> wow, glory, glory. Do you see this? The union, the union of the divine and human natures in Jesus is reconciliation. 
So we're talking about Jesus Christ with this divine nature, right? When he assumed humanity, it means that this human nature was brought in this divine nature. So in Christ Jesus, we see the divine nature and the human nature. When the divine nature was assumed, assumed human nature, in the person of Jesus Christ, that itself was reconciliation. So that is how our reconciliation was actually initiated. Because the reconciliation, you're talking about man being reconciled, man reconciling with God, right? The Bible says to wit, the God who is in Christ Jesus, wit, uh, reconciling with the world. So how did God reconcile with the world in Christ Jesus? Because in Jesus Christ, there was this divine nature. And we're seeing also him assuming the human nature because he was human 100% as well. So this human nature which was assumed in divine nature, that is what the Bible calls reconciliation. So the reconciliation actually took place in Christ Jesus. That in Christ Jesus we see divinity and humanity coming together. That is how it took place. So we say that Jesus is our reconciliation. Because in him divinity and humanity mate. And humanity was now assumed in divinity. And that is how reconciliation took place. There was no more any separation because these two natures could co coexist in one person. And that was a sign of reconciliation. So that is how it took place. I hope you understand how profound and deep this is. He goes on saying the atonement is not something that Jesus does. Rather, he is the atonement. Now you see, the process of the, the priests, they had to go through, you know, in order to atone for their sins and atone for the sins of the world. Jesus changed, of, of the Jews, Jesus changed the way he did it. You know why? Because he became the atonement. By the mere assuming of the human nature, that human nature was assumed by divine, divine nature. Reconciliation had taken place, so the atonement took place. So Jesus Christ himself is the atonement. We don't need any atonement because Jesus Christ became the atonement. <laughs> what, amaz what an amazing event that took place in Jesus Christ. So Christ is enough. We keep on saying he's enough. Indeed he is. So... For Jesus takes on the same flesh and blood as our own. It is from within the skin of Adam and throughout the whole course of his obedi obedient life in fulfill fulfillness to God that the diseased human nature is healed and cleansed from its corruption. So whatever that happened to Jesus Christ was happened to all humanity. So he was holy so that all human, the human nature may be holy, may be made holy by him. This is what was going on. I'm telling you, Jesus, salvation. And that is why. This is important because the fact that he assumed our humanity, yet his divinity was not contaminated by it. By him touching our humanity, our humanity is touched with divinity and therefore we are healed. In the experience of the incarnation of Jesus, every temptation he experiences, he reverses it by his experience of it. That is why Jesus had to be tempted at all points. He experienced the Adamic condition and converted it in his experience of it in himself. In this, Jesus divinely reverses the rebellion, the rebellious human will to innocence through his temptation in the flesh. So everything Jesus did was just to reverse what man did wrong.